Wow. That Thomas strolled across this bridge himself, taking a photograph simultaneously. Quite and and what I I didn't quite understand that the 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 slats actually move together. Yeah, I guess I mean what they deflect slightly and, and kind of bind together, um, kind of stabilizing the bridge. Yeah. Okay. Pretty bizarre. But this is a this is obviously a cable here. You can see that's hanging through it. But anyway, gives you a sense of of deformation of deflection, which certainly must have a good bit of deflection as you walk across it, too. So we talked last time about some of the definitions. What? Oh. Shoot. Sorry, sorry. Thought I was on. Is that better? I think I just turned myself off. Shoot. Is that it? Do you not get it? OK. Well, that was the wrong one anyway. Should have been this one. <laughs> OK, never mind. <laughs> Technicians, technical difficulties. OK, anyway, elastic curve. We talked about all this last time, so I'll, I'll kind of zip through it again. Um, is the, the uh, essentially the, the, the neutral axis, the, the uh, deviation of the neutral axis from the, uh, the horizontal under load, so it's the the path that the, the uh, uh, beam takes in deflection. And the, the measurement from that up to the original position is, is deflection. Uh, the uh, tangential angle here uh, at any point is the slope. So in the center here of a symmetric beam, the slope would always be 0. It bottoms out, right? That wherever the, wherever the maximum deflection is, you're, you're, that'll be the, the low point, right, that will be a slope of 0. And for simple spans, the slope is always greatest at the end. So the slope in a beam uh, in practice is very, very small. It's not, that's probably why it's not a very interesting quantity uh, for structural use or, uh, I mean, there's practically no application that I can think of right off of slope, of knowing the slope. Uh, outside of using it to find the deflection. It's useful in determining what the deflection is. But outside of that, it's not very useful in, a, in and of itself. Um, but the deflection, on the other hand, is a very uh, useful quantity. Uh, and it determines, uh, it's a, a serviceability kind of limit that if a floor deflects too much, it might either damage material or it'll feel uncomfortable to walk on. Uh, and of course, we talked about, about this, that the, the uh, amount of deflection is actually uh, controlled by the loads, of course, but also the stiffness of the beam, the loads and the stiffness. So when we, up until now, when we did the the calculated shear, that was just a force in the beam. It, didn't it wasn't dependent on what the beam was made out of. Moment is also a force, internal force in the beam, but it's totally um, has no dependency on what the, the beam, what material the beam's made out of. But, but s both slope and deflection uh, are influenced by the material and the cross section, this is the Young's modulus and the moment of inertia, as well as the length. Well, the length affected the force too as well, but, but not the, this quantity. So these EI comes into the uh, slope equations then. Uh, OK, so this just shows another um, illustration of the deflection uh, in relationship to the, the beam. Uh, application, I think we talked about this too. Um, these are, are typical code guidelines for deflection. This is it's a little bit confusing the way they pick their uh, font perhaps. That's not a 1, that's an L. So this is L over 180, L over 120. Uh, the, the span over a number equals then the uh, allowable deflection. So the deflections a uh, given in terms of the span. 
if you had a very long span, you could tolerate a larger deflection than if you had a very short span. If it only spanned uh, a foot, or no, let's see, something reasonable, eight feet. Say it spanned eight feet, you had a short beam, and it deflected uh, an inch, that would, you'd feel that. That'd be kind of bouncy. If you walked across, that'd be like two steps and you'd drop an inch, right? As opposed to a beam that was maybe uh, 36 feet wide and had that same one inch deflection, that you might not notice so much as you're, you'd be crossing the, the width of this room, uh, to drop an inch might not be very noticeable. So it's a, it's a parameter that's in relation to the total span. And some of these, as we discussed, uh, these ones that are influenced by live load, this would probably be, uh, this is a sensibility. This is where you feel the floor being bouncy. It's also where uh, some stiff materials like a plaster ceiling might be damaged. Um, if you're not worried about that, like say here, industrial uses, okay, for roofs, an industrial roof, well, you're not worried about it feeling bouncy. So then you could tolerate a little, this would be a, a larger deflection, right? This would be an even larger deflection. Here's the largest deflection allowable of all. Right? And that would be governed may, on the roofs. You can tolerate more deflection because you don't feel it. You're not going to be walking around. It's not the problem. But you can't, if you have too much deflection, you might have a problem with what's called ponding. As the beam sags, water could collect. And then that would add to the load, which would sag more and more water would collect, which would be more load and cause it to deflect more. And that could become catastrophic then. Uh, that's why usually roof designs are. Uh, besides having roof drains, you try to uh, design it in a way that it would hopefully dra drain even if the roof drain got clogged, have a, uh, a parapet that would allow that. Okay, well here we looked at this diagram probably way back when we first did, did uh, uh, shear and moment diagrams. This shows the relationship and now all the way down through deflection of um, the different curves uh, that describe the forces and the, the slope and the deflection. And it's a, it's a very consistent uh, relationship. Uh, if you start at the top and, and go down, it's integration each time. You integrate the load to get the shear, which you integrate to get the moment. This is why we, we were able to calculate those by uh, finding the areas. You find the area here is a form of integration, right? And that gives you the the change in, in uh, the um, vertical value between those two points. If you go the other way, it's, it, you're differentiating, right? If you started knowing the deflection, if you had a beam and you deflected it to some point uh, y, then you could back calculate and determine what that load was that caused that deflection all the way through and, and along the way all the other the values. Uh, by progressive uh, differentiation of that. If you had, this is, you know, assuming you have this curve, right, to have that equation. It's not just a spot value y exactly, although, I mean, it works out here the way they've described it, but to really get a number out of it, you'd have to have the equation of that curve, and then you could, then you could back calculate. And I thought it would be entertaining to do, well, I'll tell you what, turn, turn those lights up. Let's not do it with because this will be enough on the board. I'm going to do a, a uh, rare feat here, but I'll try not to spend too much time on it. I thought it'd be interesting to run through one of these so you at least see, and I'll do it with the, the, the equations, and then we'll do it with the diagrams. And you can see that you get, I mean, how it parallels maybe. It might be at least fun to try. I'm not really that good at integration, but these are pretty simple, so maybe I can do it. Um, if you start with, with the load. Now that load that's drawn up there and the, the load that we usually um, draw in the diagrams, we make positive, but actually this is, a, this is a negative value for the load, right? It's a negative W if I were to, to keep track of my, my signs. So if I, if I uh, want to integrate the, that load 
over this, then that should give me the, uh, let me give myself a little more room. I'm going to run into my diagrams. Right? That load, that'll give me the shear, right? That's the next one down. And if I, if I did that, this equation here is fairly simple. This is assuming this is the y direction, vertical, normal, uh, x, y, right? Then you'd have, if you want to write that equation in terms of y, it's just simply negative w. y equals negative w. So that is not too difficult to, to differentiate. If I come across with it, this would be then y equals, this is a constant, and you pick up x, right? You also pick up something else you pick up a, a constant of integration every time you go through. And this is, this is the one that gets to be a little bit of a hassle. The diagram, we know what it looks like, right? That's the, that's the shear diagram. So knowing that, if this is the total length is L, this is L over 2, you have to know to solve the, the um, constant of integration, you have to have one spot on the diagram as kind of a touchstone, right? Can you remember, probably remember doing this. People do this sort of thing still. Right, so you have to, you have to know something. Well, you do know something. You know right there the, uh, the value of y equals 0. So you can solve this then. Uh, and we'll do this over here. For 0 at, uh, this would be at uh, x equals L over 2. So, let's see if we can do this. This would be L over 2. This would be C. Then you solve for C, and it, it would have to equal, it would have to bounce that, right? L over 2. So that gives me an equation here. Y equals this negative X plus W L over 2. So that would be then this, and if you look at it for a second, it's that uh, form for a line, right? Y equals mx plus b or whatever, <laughs> whatever that formula is. This would be the slope of the line, x, and this is a is the y-intercept. As the y-intercept, whoop, there it is. If this is my origin, would be that point, which is, which is then the number that's familiar to you. This is uh, wl over 2, right, is the maximum maximum shear. So that's the, so, so it works out. But <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, and <clears throat> if we take half of, half of this and do it by the areas, this is uh, WL, right? Let's see. No, that would be W. This is L over, okay, screw up. This is L over 2 is half of that. So the rectangular area here is WL over 2. So that the area here then is is that number is what would be if I put in if I put in zero for x that drops out and I get that so <gasps> ah, it just you know I ran through this I was sitting here um, last night with my my seven year old and he was watching me do this making sure I could do it because <laughs> I better do this at least once through before I do this on the board. Uh, and and he's watching me. I got all the way to the end. I, was, I got all the numbers work out, and he goes, "Huh? What? <laughs> you got strange ideas. Let's read a story. <laughs> up with this. Okay. Well, all right. Now we're going. We got the shear. Now you got to integrate the the shear dx, and you get the moment. All right. This is then. This is then the parabolic. So here we go from linear. This one and and when now we're going to integrate this. Okay, let's see if we can do that, negative, and look at this. What, what do you get? There's a constant, x squared over 2. Oh, so you pick up the squared. That's why it's always going, you're, every time you integrate it, you're going to go an order higher with the curve. So this is then uh, WL, and here we just pick up the x, right, oh, plus the c. Oh, stupid c. Okay, but that one's, oh, this c's a nice c. Every other c is easy because... Uh, this diagram starts at zero. So if I stick in, 
if I stick in 0 for x, then this falls out, right? That'll be 0. So that gives me the equation right off for that. Oh, sweet, wonderful. Now I could test that by, this is the value that I really kind of like, that maximum, right? Uh, that would be, again, at L over 2. So if I stuck in, uh, let's see, at the center line, this will be y at the, at the center line. We'll have a negative w. Now this is, let's get the 2 over there. Here's the x squared. That's not cubed, squared. Uh, that would be L squared over 2 squared, right? Mm, this is where I'll probably, the only place I screw up. W, L over 2. There's the constant. Here's the x is L over 2. And that one was gone. Okay. Mm. Did I screw up? This one looks right. This is... This is um, negative WL squared over 8 plus, uh, oh yeah, let's put it into eighths. This would be a fourth, right? So that would be 2 eighths uh, WL squared. So 2 minus the 1, that would come out to be WL squared over 8. Ah! Ah, it's just, ah. Okay, WL squared over 8, and that would, you could get the same from this diagram here. If you multiplied uh, the height times the base divided by 2, so you'd get uh, WL times L over 2 and 2, and divide by 2 because it's a triangle. So you'd get WL squared over 8. So that works out for the even doing it by areas. Now you come down down here. Whoops, no. Now we come down here. What do we have? Now we're going to integrate the moment, and that's going to give us the slope, but you also pick up this EI term, slope EI. And this one, what the heck's this diagram look like? Okay, think about this a minute. This is looking like, in, in reality, I've just got this load. It looks like this, right? So I start off on this side with a negative slope, right? And I end up with a positive slope over there. Is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So if I'm right about that, a negative slope... Okay, so I end up with, and it, let's see, yeah, it's positive slope on this side, that's right, and it must be a zero in the middle because it's symmetric. Anytime it's symmetric, the, the, this one, maybe if we drew this diagram, I'd be happier. The deflection diagram where that's bottoms out, then this is at zero, right? At a maximum, this will be at a Anyway, so let's see if we can do the, this will have a nasty C in it. Let's see, minus W over 2, right? And this will be then X cubed over 3 plus W. I pull my constants out so I can do this a little better. X squared over 2 plus, and now we do have a C. So now you have to solve for that C at the center line. Mm, this will probably be a little bit messier. Let's see. This will be, I've got to put in, um, again, L over 2, right? So this is at L over 2 to get 0. So 0 is going to equal um, negative W over uh, 2 and 3 and here. This will be L cubed over 2 cubed, which would be 8. Okay, and then we do W L over 2 and another 2. Right, that's a, maybe I should write 4. Not to be too confused in here. 6, this one's 4. I'm, I'm joining those. 
so that I can write this as L squared over 2 times 2 it would be over 4, right? Okay, and that's it. So then I have to solve for that. Mm. This is 16, so maybe I do WL cubed over 16. Does that look right? Plus, this is a minus. Uh, this is... Yeah, no, it's 48, but I want to have it in 16, so it'd be like 2, uh, two times 3, so I should have had maybe a, th I'm going to put that in the top so I can have 16 in the bottom, a third um, WL cubed. So I'm that, okay, so that, then the C, would change the sign of all these then, right? So if I've got, so I'm going to set this equal to C, then I've got a, a one-third WL cubed over 16 minus the other one, WL cubed over 16. So I'm taking a third, yeah, I'm going to get, end up with a minus, but it'll be one third less, so it'll be right two thirds. W <laughs> W L cubed over sixteen, which would have to equal. Let's see, that would drop down here three times. This is what forty eight divided by two is twenty four. Okay, W L cubed over twenty four. And remember, I still have that EI. Now that, <laughs> that should equal that value then. WL cubed over 24. And if we did it by areas, this area is, um, the formula is 2 thirds base times height. This is 1 half base times height. This is one one, one half, two thirds, I think. <laughs> or check. There's a, a beautiful table. One of the one of the wonders, there's a few sweet things that Engel comes up with. This is have you looked at this page? Data sheet D twenty four. That is a stroke of genius. That is so, I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere else. Have you? Graphic you have. Oh come on, Matthew, you have you're lying. He created it. This is, and it's, but you have to be very careful to pay attention to the black dots. Those are vertices. And look at this. What few people realize, it, it makes a difference whether you come off this way, you get different formulas, or figure the secant down here. If you, follow, you study that a little bit, it is marvelous. And this, right now, we're on two thirds, the parabolic one, which would be two thirds. Um, the base uh, L over 2 times the height, what was W L squared over 8? So we get uh, these twos cancel, W L cubed over 24. Okay. So now you can decide for yourself which way was easier. <laughs> but, you know, there's a certain, certain you know, uh, I don't know. Well, there. <laughs> uh, now, what are we up to? If we integrate that slope, I guess we'll leave the EIs in there. DX. Then we get. Then we get the deflection. I guess I'm still got my EI tra traveling around. So now I've got to take. Did we figure out what this was? WL, that was that, right? <laughs> oh, oh, it, w it was, except that, whoa, I made one mistake here. That's a negative. That, I guess, you don't see. That's one thing you didn't get out of here, unless you were just intelligent enough to know it somehow. But that, mathematically, if I had paid attention, I would have kept that negative sign, and that does go down here. That is a negative. 
Now, let's see. So this should be a negative. What the heck? I, it seems like I got a more complicated equation here. Is this the right one? It, was. it wasn't until I erased it. Shoot, why did I erase it? Dang. All right, wait a minute. Now I got to put it back up. W x cubed over. I know why I erased it. I didn't like the, um, I should have had those in there maybe. Plus uh, W L x minus, okay, minus that one. Uh, w L cubed over 24. Okay, so that's, that's right. This was, this went to this one, right? This went to this one. Right, right, that one goes in order higher. Well, wait a minute, then I picked up a, oh shoot, why did I erase that? I won't be able to see, somewhere on here. Well, I assume you're all writing this down diligently. It should be four. This was a four. Okay. Yeah, this one's a six. Okay, I got them. I got them. I, I, yeah. Okay, whatever. Should be a six. Oh, yeah, because this went to three. Three times two is six. All right, all right. All right now we're good. Now we're good. We got that. Now all we got to do is, is get one more time here. Uh, and this one will be an easy one because it, it, the constant comes out on zero. So this will be W, um, let's put this one over 6, X to the 4th over 4 then, right? And plus W, L, 4. Oh, that's a test, right? Thank you. Please, we have completed testing the fire alarm system. Thank you for your patience and cooperation. All right. <laughs> no, more, no more distractions here. I can't break my concentration or the whole thing's lost. 24x plus C. Okay, get, get rid of that. We didn't need to know that anyway. Okay plus C. But here, here again, C is zero, so that one drops out. So now you've got this, now you've got this equation, and if you simplify that, let's see if we can do that. Oh, gosh, probably not. 40, that would be 24, right? Minus W X to the fourth over 24 plus W L x to the third over 12. And then I got 24 in the end. Oh, good job. That was the right, right way to do it then. And this is WL cubed over 24x. Okay, so now we've got Now we've got, how come, wait a minute. Is that right? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right, that's right. Now we've got, now we've got, that should be the equation because the C, the C drops out, so that's the equation for Y, and now the one that we really want is at that point, so we put it in for L over 2. So then we'd solve this, um, for the L over 2. So you'd get a negative W, X would be the L over, over two. Two, t 2, 2 to the 4th is 16, right? And there's the 24, mm, wow, plus W, L, L to the 3rd over uh, 2 cubed times 24 minus W L cubed 
L over 2 over 24. So this is probably my lowest one. This is 48. So let's see if we set it all equal to put them on the whoop, and combine the L's. L, L to the fourth over 48. Okay, this one would be W, L to the fourth. This would be two times four, so I'm going to put a fourth up here, right, and a 48 down here. I do that right? You watch this. I don't want to screw up. And this would be an eighth. An eighth over 48. W L to the fourth. So now we've got we've got where did that quarter come from? Shouldn't that be a half? So it's because I said I want forty eight, so that would be four this is twenty four, right? Not twelve. Three times four. That's not right, is it? That should be 12, right? <gasps> is that one right? This is four. That's a 24. This should be 12. Okay. This should be. This should be a half. This should be 12. Oh well. Okay. So you can see this could be a little bit tricky. But then, what do we got? An eighth, that's, that's five eighths from a, equals uh, a negative five eighths or four eighths? Six eighths, six eighths, oh, shoot. This would be this would be five eighths minus a whole, so it's three three eighths, right? Oh shoot! I did it last night. I swear. <laughs> Forty eight uh, W L to the fourth, and that then you'd have to bring through. No, somehow I, somehow I lost it. There's there should be five eighths. It should be five eighths at the end. This I remember. Ah, ha, 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 that one's negative. That's where I lost it. Okay, that's a negative. An eight, so that's one and an eighth minus a half. So that's the five eighths. That is five eighths. Okay, so that does come out as five eighths. Okay, all right, now I'm back on track. Okay, so that should be 5W L to the fourth over and eight, 8 times 48, 384, 384. And the part that would be there still is the EI. So that, maybe I won't go through it, but if you take this, this equation would be, if you have to look at the magic diagram here, Five eighths. See, yeah, yeah. You, it could be three quarters. You'd think it's three quarters, but it's not. It's coming off the top one. You have to look at this diagram. It's five eighths. So this would be five eighths bh, which would be um, five eighths l over two times this, and this was uh, w. L cubed over 24. So here you have 16 times 24. That's probably the, the 384. And this would be the 5 WL to the. So definitely easier like that. Yeah, I'm convinced. OK, I give up. But <clears throat> you, could, you could go through. You can see where the equations are derived, at least, Yeah, like this. The, the relationships, all the relationships that go along with the, the calculus derivation, whoops, here, shut that off. 
uh, follow through with this. So relationships like, uh, now this one's, this one's with a point load, so you have, yeah, this was also, I deliberately picked this as an example because it's, they're all consistent curves, right? I've only got one equation. This curve is described by one clean equation each time. Here, there is an is a inconsistency, right? So I'd have two equations. I'd have two equations each time. Well, here, okay, maybe down here it, it merges back, but, but up here there'd be over a range and over a range. So you'd have, because of that uh, um, bump in it there. But, but all the relationships that we talked about in building these, like finding the area here to get that value, they also apply on down the line. You find the area here to get this value. You find the area here to get this value. You just have to add, multiply in. For these two, you have to multiply. This would be in radians, uh, but you have to multiply the EI onto it. And this comes out in, if you get it into inches, into, um, you probably have to be careful of a conversion factor. If this is in feet, the span's in feet, and you want this to come out in inches, EI's probably in inches, then you have to convert the feet, which would be feet cubed. Yeah, this feet cubed, uh, which would be 1728, right? 12, 12 cubed, 144 times 12, 1728. So there's always, and because I mean, if you, you think about this relationship, this relationship here, you're always, no matter what the loading is, you're always going through the same process of, of you pick up an L term here, you pick up a second L term here, you pick up a third one here. So it'll always be this value down here always has that length cubed in it. So it's always, the conversion factor is always um, 1728 assuming that, that this is in feet and these are in inches and that you want the answer in inches, then it's always, it'll always come out like that. Also that the load is in feet, like the W the, that would have a, a foot component in it is also in feet. Okay, well, let's look at these. These are kind of interesting. The, the, that problem that is due tonight works on a, on a cantilever, and cantilevers are kind of an interesting case because it, the sign changes. It's a, the only one, if you, you, you walk around to the other side, it's a different sign. Look at this. If I have a cantilever like this, that has a negative slope, right? It's sloping. I read my slope this way. It's sloping downward. Whereas if I had it, had it held over on this side, then it would be sloping upward because you read slope from left to right. So, so the the convention's consistent, but depending on which end supported, you get you get a different mathematical interpretation, right? So this could be exact. This is just this beam is seen from the other side, and the shears also flip, right? Your shears flip because that convention is also determined on, you know, what is it? This I have to do it backwards. If if um, you split it and this side drops, then that's positive, right? Yeah positive, and if you split it and this side falls, then that's negative. So if you think about it a little bit, or just remember a normal situation, it starts off positive. Uh, okay, and then you follow these down. So these are done, these can be done with also with areas. Here's a, an area which gives you a value. This is, this would be P times L, which gives you PL. This would be uh, PL times L again. Uh, over 2 for the triangle, PL squared over 2. And then you have to look at the, this is that 2 thirds uh, equation. So 2 thirds uh, PL squared times L would be then that. So by areas, you can add those up fairly easy, easily. The, the other um, thing you can do with, with these diagrams, you can add them by superposition um, or by parts. This is, this is actually, I guess, by parts. You can separate the loads um, and, and tackle them one at a time. It may be easier uh, to do them. Like if you, for heaven's sakes, if you were doing it with equations, you'd certainly want to do it one load at a time. I, I guess it might be easier uh, because you could then just add up the equations at the end. Well, you can add up the, the results here as well, even by areas. So if I take, if I have a, 
a case like this, this is a, a little bit like the problem, I think, where you have uh, two loads on a cantilever. I can do them one load at a time. I can do that load and then add it to the results of this load, and the total is going to be that. So if I take this one by itself, that's, there's the length of the beam. There's the point load right there. I have that for the, the shear value, right, 3 and 3. Okay, so it comes up 3, goes across and down. That's the end of it. Then there's no more shear out here. There's nothing going on. The moment, it had the peak moment back here, which would be that area. There's the peak moment. Uh, it comes up to the, to the load. And then the, I mean, think of this. I've got this guy like this. I've got a load here. Well, assuming the rest of it's weightless, if I disregard the weight of it, if this is the only load, then there's, n there's no more load out there. There's nothing going on. But there is something going on in terms of slope. If you go now to this diagram, here's this, this uh, area equals this value. That's true, but that's not the end of the diagram. You have to be a little bit careful because the beam is still going on, right? This is, this is the point load. But that's not the end of the beam. And from this load, this load is causing this deflection out there. It's also causing this slope. Now, after, after this point, there's no more load, so the slope shouldn't change. But it's going to keep going. It's not going to suddenly go, you know, whoop, and back up. No, no, it's not going to do that. Um, it'll just keep going straight. So you've got to add this, this little box on here. And of course, then that influences the ultimate deflection out here at the end, right? It's not, I mean, you can figure the deflection here too, but it's not all that interesting. This is, the, this is the maximum out here at the end. So then, now this one's more typical. You go down, you get that, you get that. This is the full picture, right, all the way across. You get that. Now you add these values up, and you get the total. You could also get the intermittent totals. I didn't, I don't think I figured this one. I don't know how I got that. I guess from this, this value here should have been, should have been there. If you've written it down there. And then you can add them up and get the intermittent value. And the diagrams add up, so you can kind of see how they. So that's pretty straightforward. That's another m method. You can always, and not just with cantilever, with anyone. You can pull it apart and do it by parts. You just have to make sure you get all the, the influences correct, you know, like, like that, that you remember to. Another, this is, this is the other, this is a sec second most incredible thing that Engel, Engel came up with. This, this approach is an absolute stroke of genius on how to solve, by diagrams, ones that are asymmetric. The ones we've looked at so far, well, cantilevers aside, but that, that one I did the big example of here, I was able to find very, <laughs> very importantly this point. I, knew, I, I always knew L over 2 to plug in to get C. If you don't know where that point is, where, where the zero slope is, or you don't know where this maximum deflection is, then after you get down to here, you're kind of stuck. You don't know, you don't know this point. Because each time when you even doing it by areas, you've got to know a point here. You know, we knew, you know, you knew this point if it's symmetric. Even if it's not symmetric, we can find this point, right, by by adding the areas, and you, you can calculate where that point is fairly easily. The areas are simple. Uh, and then when you go down to the next one, uh, it's also not too difficult. But as you go down further, now this one's probably a parabolic curve. How are you going to find where that parabolic curve is at a maximum if it's not uh, symmetric? That's a little bit of a, well, maybe you could get, I guess you'd get it from this diagram. But then as you go down to this diagram, that, that, that's the problem. How are you going to know where this one crosses zero? Because this is not, you don't know where this is. Anyway, so if you think about it, with any asymmetric loading, you've got that little bit of a dilemma. You don't know where, where this is crossing zero. And this method, all it, all it does, but it does it quite eloquently, elegantly, <laughs> if it, I guess if you speak it, it's elegant. It's elegant, at any rate. Uh, is find where this, where this crossing point is. And the way he does it, I could probably explain in three minutes. Um, well, turn that light on. Get the big light on. Let's clear ourselves just this much space. It is an absolute marvel, which you'll probably, 
not see in too many places. You probably don't see it in many places because people don't do this with diagrams, really. But, but nonetheless, if you wanted to do this with diagrams, it would be kind of a clever thing. Um, what he does, he says, let's say, well, wait a minute, let me start with the load. Let's say you have some load that's, um, who knows what it is, but it's asymmetric. Okay, it's not, it's not symmetric. So, so you have some uh, asymmetric diagrams, and if you go all the way down to the slope diagram, oh, oh, we did get the load up there. Oh well, whatever. Um, <laughs> well, oddly enough, I would have drawn the diagram the other way, but it's probably it's probably. One little glitch in this, he probably draws the diagrams the wrong way. But say, say you had some diagram for the slope, and it's not symmetric, and that one side, one side is bigger than the other, because if you, if you draw it based on, let's, let's draw it based on the way he did it with some points. OK. This one's bigger, though. This one's smaller. OK. Say I have, have a situation like that, and they're not, they're not symmetric. And, and I have some sort of um, uh, diagram like this. I can pick arbitrarily a point to cross here. The real point is, is out here somewhere. I mean, if this is the, the deflection, somewhere in here is the maximum deflection. Not under that point, certainly, or not under that point. But you don't know where, you don't know where it is, really. But it's somewhere out there. Anyway, you arbitrarily pick a point here. So that you can you can draw this diagram using the the um, areas and have lengths. If you didn't, if you don't know where that point is, you can't calculate the areas because you don't know what the lengths are. But if you pick just plain pick one, then you could do that. You can calculate the 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 areas down here. Now, this is these areas are not the same size. Whoops, that was not. But they should be really. They should be, because they represent the areas there represent the deflection on the next diagram, right? And down here, whatever, wherever it goes down, it has to come back up the same amount, right? It comes down this far, but it's got to go back up the same amount, right? So that tells you that this area has to balance that area. They have to be equal, or, or else the deflection wouldn't come back to zero. So if these two areas are equal, then, then all you have to do, really, you've, you've drawn this curve correctly based on, on the, the values from the moment diagram. You just got this point wrong. Well, you just need to shift then your line here. If I shift it down a little bit um, to here, then, I'm, then I can get rid of some of this area, and I can put it over here, and I can eventually, by you know, shifting this down, find some point where those two areas balance. I mean, picture it as, as things that, you know, you've got this curve, right? And it's as if you're, you're shifting the balance point here. Somewhere, somewhere the thing will balance. They'll be equal. And you've just got to find that point. So this, this he calls D. This is the, the amount that you're going to displace this, this line here. Uh, and he says, this, this big area, A, uh, minus the little area I've got there is equal to this big area B plus the little plus that that area there. That's simple. That's just saying I'm just going to push this down so that when I subtract off enough here, add it add it over there, it balances. At some point, it balances. When that balances, then then this diagram will be right. Now you just have to say what a minus uh, b equals a whoops plus b hmm. did I do that right okay now this this quantity here a plus b is this line here I mean it's this rectangle that rectangle this is the beauty of it this is this is mastery look at that it's like it's like, um, you know, when you see, uh, you look one way and you see one image and then you look another way. What's that called? 
emergence, isn't it? Emergence. This, this is an emergent rectangle. It's an emergent rectangle. And that emergent rectangle has the, the area of LD. And I mean, AB, these are areas, equals LD. Ah, OK, so what, I, what do I want? I want D equals A minus B over L. That's it. That's it. Talk about nice. Look at this. So sweet. Oh, that, that is terrific. So all you have to do to solve these asymmetric things is, is, is where'd my little pointer go? Get back over here. Uh, is use this equation. You draw the thing up, and, and you can calculate D simply by finding these areas that are wrong, dividing them by L, and boom, that's D. It's incredible. It's just incredible. So you can have fun doing this, <laughs> but maybe we won't do it right now. Maybe Monday we'll, we'll go through an example of how to do that, but it's pretty, pretty amazing. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Have a nice week.